This is Joy in the Journey with your hosts, Sue Landis and Beth Davis. life stories, struggles, and victories, and how it's possible to keep your joy through it all. So stay tuned. It's time for Joy in the Journey. you tuned in today we're back join the journeys here again and it's not a mistake that you're watching this show today I'm glad you're here we have a great show no no take that back God has a great show in store today for you mm -hmm. and you aren't here by accident and we are so excited with uh, the guest we have on today and what's going to come out and what's God's going to pull from each one of us I think there's a little bit in everybody if you just let him get a hold of you and let him pull it out so uh, uh, with that, I want to introduce my guest today. I, of course, I've got Reverend Sue on the set with me um, today, and Hello. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, a guest from Cleveland, Pastor Melinda Bowman. Glad you're here, Melinda. Thank you so oh, much. We know you are loaded <laughs> up, wonderful. loaded up. Isn't that wonderful? We know God's going to pull it to be out. Be here with you, ladies, today. Yes. Thank you. We're excited. We're excited. We're excited because yes. we know that God brings us to those places in our life and mm -hmm. he, he he desires to pull out where yes. we've been in our journey that's right and and I know that's why you're here because there's so much that you have got from where he's pulled you from and pulled you through and, and yes. taken you to I know I'm a, I'm a hand talker I talk <laughs> with my hands a lot but I, I I'm really excited because when you share with me what you what God was sharing and wanting to pull from you for yes. this program today, it just touched me in a way because of my my walk and uh, where I've come with that. And Thank so you, uh, we're just gonna let uh, we're gonna let the Holy Spirit have control here today, and as He brings it from you and and brings it to the people that are watching today, whether whoever that would be, uh, ladies, men. Um, mm -hmm. God knows, you know, yes, He knows who he He's got, and He sets people up to to tune in just at the right time. And so I'm gonna, I'm going to, because I know you've got so much. Just sitting and talking to you before the program today, mm -hmm. you are so full, and God has so much that He has uh, wants to pull from you today to share with the the people. Amen. And I am going to turn it over to you, and Reverend Sue and I may uh, poke and prod, and because He may bring <laughs> something up, you know, sure. that we're relating to with what you bring up, and we may jump in and. And we've already got permission to do that, right? So absolutely, um, we'll just kind of let you start. You Thank can either you. share where he's got you mm -hmm. today, right now, in the ministry you're at, or you can kind of go back and, and bring us from where he's brought you from, just however you feel Amen. led to, to, to share. You. Well, when you first, you know, when we set up this uh, recording, we wanted to talk about issues that we have experienced, encountered in life, and and overcome. Mm -hmm. So I thought about that for a little while. Mm -hmm. What should I talk about when it comes to my personal journey and my life and, and my walk with God and the things that He's healed and brought me through? So to my mind, it came to uh, my own childhood, mm -hmm. my own upbringing, yeah. and the issue of uh, my family uh, as a child growing up. Um, I am the only was the only daughter uh, in my family, had four brothers. And my parents divorced when I was at a young age. I was the second to the youngest. Mm -hmm. And because my father was an alcoholic and it brought much uh, chaos to the home. Mm -hmm. And so they were divorced by the time I was four years old. And of course, a four-year-old child really doesn't understand alcoholism mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. those issues. Uh, I just knew that dad was gone. Mm -hmm. And really, I actually had very few memories of, of dad anyway mm -hmm. uh, at that young age. 
but uh, the very few memories that I did have of dad in the home was a lot of yelling, mm -hmm. uh, fighting, you mm -hmm. know, my parents. And a young child doesn't understand that, you know, why are mom and dad, you know, yelling. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a bad feeling uh, when you have that going on. So I uh, grew up in a single parent uh, household. Uh, mom raised all five of us mm -hmm. as a single mother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, praise God, dad did get sober eventually oh, uh, after the divorce. And so that's, that's great, and I praise God for that. Mm -hmm. uh, both of my parents did get remarried uh, eventually. Uh, but so I grew up in a single parent household. And so dad would come on visitation. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of divorce settlements provide for, for the father to, to have you know, visitation or, or partial custody. Mm -hmm. But dad would come and visit. But mom would, would say, you know, uh, your dad is, is a bad person. Mm -hmm. Because, well, she was speaking from her perspective, right? right? right, right. Uh, they had a bad marriage. Mm -hmm. and, but a young girl hearing that mm -hmm. about her father is disturbing mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're thinking dad is bad uh, and even to be afraid of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's just not a good uh, image to have of your father. And I think it would be good for many divorced people to keep that in mind. Think about Absolutely. the impacts of yeah. divorce on the children. Right. And even no matter how angry you were at your spouse, no matter how much bad things took place in, in the marriage, mm -hmm. uh, don't destroy your you know, child's, uh, you know, the other parent uh, in front of your, your own child. Don't mm -hmm. do that. That's right. very wise counsel. Right. Mm -hmm. Very wise counsel. And, uh, but I know it's easy to do, uh, for a parent to do that. So basically I grew up, um, you know, with what is called the absent father. And dad, as I said, would come on visitation, um, but I was afraid of him. Mm -hmm. You know, he was bad. And so it was kind of hard to develop a relationship. So what I tell people is, I have a father, I knew who my father was, and think about it, a lot of people, we're talking about a very common issue in society today. Yeah, Matter of fact, a whole fatherless generation. Mm -hmm. So I'm just one example of that. And I know you had talked about mm -hmm. your own father uh, was in the home, mm -hmm. uh, but there were issues there even though your father was present, but mm -hmm. my father was absent. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a father, I knew who he was. Uh, he would come and visit, but I didn't have a dad. Mm -hmm. And it's a big difference, yes. you know. I had no father in the home, and that created a wound. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an emptiness, yes. so to say, yes. um, an absence. Mm -hmm. And so when I got older, grown, uh, when I got saved, uh, I didn't really know or understand the depth of, of the father issue. But then the Bible says, you know, when we're reading the word, and uh, as Christians, we know that God is our father. Mm -hmm. yes. But um, if we didn't have good father experiences, how can we relate to Father God? That's it right there. Yeah. Boy, that is it. That was one of my toughest mm -hmm. encounters, you know. Yes. Because they're not there intimately or not there emotionally for you. That's right. It was like, you know, yes, I believe it. Yes, I accept it. I, I have an understanding of it. But mm -hmm. yes, it was like, how do you talk to somebody if you've never really had practice or done it with an earthly father? How do you? That's right. How, I was just like, how do you do that? How do you? God, okay, you're there. Uh, what do I say? What if I say the wrong thing? Or what if I say it the wrong way? You know, with just my circumstances, you know, it was tough. Yes. It was tough, but it was a process. Like we talked earlier, even before recording, yes. you know, it's a process that he takes you through and, and he has greater plans. And I know you talked about healing that you had with yes. your own father yes. as an adult. And we, we do that. I, I did that as well. Uh, after we were adults, um, there was a healing process that could take place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we can have a good relationship with our parents after we're grown or at least better. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, 
the, the issue of uh, what happened in childhood cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. You know, I can have a relationship with my father as an adult, but it, it won't bring him back. It won't bring back uh, a childhood where I wish I had a father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, I believe, where the healing needs to take place. And that's what I had to do. I had to forgive Dad uh, just for not being there. Right, right. Did you go in through, my childhood? Did you go through any issues of feeling like you were the problem? You were the reason, perhaps, that your I, Dad I, left? I or? did, as I mentioned, those few memories that I had before Dad left the home of the yelling. I didn't know why. Right. What, what were, was it? Us? You know, when, mm -hmm. who, who knew? You know. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, uh, getting emotional healing and a uh, very strong uh, healing prayer that, that took place that really helped me uh, when I was saved and realized that I needed healing in this area. Uh, so God is, is the healer yes. of every hurt, of every wound, uh, whether it be in the mind, in mm -hmm. the, the emotions, uh, our broken heart. Uh, so the issue of, of the father was was an issue for me and so we had prayer uh, this was several years ago and God showed me during this prayer time a memory uh, from the past actually of my childhood and I know I was who knows maybe five years old at the most mm -hmm. and it was a picture of me standing in the living room uh, of our home and dad was gone uh, and my mom was sitting on the couch next to a phone and not talking on the phone but there was a phone there and she was there with a box of tissues crying mm -hmm. and I was just a little child you know looking up to my mom uh, sitting on the couch wondering why she was crying mm -hmm. and somehow I believe that it was because of my dad mm -hmm and that dad was making mom sad mm -hmm. and, and making her cry. Mm -hmm. And I believed at that point that dad was bad and dad was a man and so men must be bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it even hurt that, you know, uh, uh, idea of, of what a man is supposed to be, what a father is supposed mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. I can boy, I can relate to that. Boy, that hits the button. It sure does, and it brings back to my mind. I've said it before. Looking for love in all the wrong places, you know. And yes. yeah. if you don't really know, and if you don't know the Lord, and I didn't either, you know, as a young person, mm -hmm. and and you live in that dysfunction, but you don't even really know because that's all you know. Unless you start getting older, and I remember going to people's houses, you know, and you'd be mm -hmm. in different family settings, and. And maybe you'd be in one that, you know, it wasn't sure wasn't like yours. And then you just begin to think and just the suggestions you just shared there and the things that you mm -hmm. with uh, seeing situations, you don't quite have an understanding, you know, right. if somebody's crying and and you just start forming these opinions yes. and thoughts, you know, you don't know, you know, they come and you don't know what to do with them because right. you, you've not been trained. And, mm -hmm. and so you just start adopting them. And yeah, it does. It yeah, has they're a, called ungodly beliefs, yes, embedded lies. But they become who you are, you <laughs> That's know, right. until God's able to Correct. get in there, you know, and change that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be the way it is. And yeah, I can remember having a, a really hard time with, with, uh, male relationships, you know, and, and nothing doesn't, I'm not talking about, you know, like a intimate relationship, just any, yes. like what you just yes. said there. I mean, that just really jumped out of my spirit because it was Amen. difficult, you know, for me to even talk with another man, you know, and, and because I formed these opinions, I formed these things that I just assumed that, well, you know, this is all just, men are yeah, that way. yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm just afraid of all men because, you know, they might holler at me or they might tell me I'm not doing something right or, you know, or whatever the yes. situation is, sure. you know, and it's, it, it is, it's, but it's a process that God has a plan, a better plan. And that's the hope that we have today. And that's why we have this program and why Amen. we want to yes. share because there is joy in it. If we get, if we just get to that point where you can get that revelation, you know, because when you're in the midst of it, you know, and the dysfunction and the screaming or yelling or whatever the situation is, mm -hmm. you know, or the absent father, yes. however that is, um, it's, 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 at a, it's a place where uh, you don't know that there's 
a good place beyond it until God can bring that revelation to you and yes. you know that he's got a better plan with it yes and that you can um, put your hope in him and and to look beyond it you know and not let it keep you stuck because it keeps you stuck for well, if yeah. you let it it'll keep you stuck right and then it, it gets us stuck in our relationship with father God mm -hmm. yeah it does because if our earthly father was abusive mm -hmm. absent or anything else that was negative mm -hmm. Um, how can we relate to a, a father God who's supposed to be loving, That's right. uh, a protector, a provider, hmm. you know, all of the things that our earthly father was not. That's right. It is. It's and so we have to get healed, I believe, of our earthly father's, the wounds mm -hmm. from, from our earthly father to even have a good relationship with, with our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. So how, how would you do that? What would you, for somebody which I think a lot of people go through that, mm -hmm. um, finding out who Father God really yes. is because mm -hmm. of our fathers that we have here on earth or we don't have. Right. Mm -hmm. um, how, what process does it take to receive that healing and move forward so Amen. that wound is cleaned and healed? Um, what what yes. would you say about that? What process did you need to well, be healed from amen. That. That's such a powerful topic, such a powerful <laughs> issue. Mm -hmm. And I believe many people watching this program have uh, similar issues because uh, basically in our society today, mm -hmm. uh, so many are fatherless. Mm -hmm. So many young people were raised, much like I was, with no father. Mm -hmm. uh, some people even don't know who their father is and how hurtful. I mean, whether you're uh, a boy or a girl, uh, of course young men, boys need a father mm -hmm. to just show them what a, a man is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have no role model, and young women as well need to know how to relate to, to men. Mm -hmm. And so if that is not there, uh, it just creates a lot of woundedness. And I actually have this book that I brought today uh, on this topic is called In Search of Father's Blessing. And the author of this book talks about how the fatherless uh, you know, generation has impacted so many people and it's a major uh, ministry that, that we do in the church mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. because we've been hurt, we've been wounded in our lives and then we need healing and a lot of hurts that we've gone through uh, comes from the family mm -hmm. in our childhood. Mm -hmm. So just here on this, the back of the cover here, it says, a troubled teen wrote, there are times when I feel like the title father is the worst name mm -hmm. God could have given himself. What a stupid idea when father means rejection in my world. Mm. Wow. And I would say a lot wow. of people can identify with that, maybe even you uh, today. And here it says the author, uh, his ministry daily, saw young people struggling with drugs, alcohol, abortion, prostitution. Mm. As God gives insight, the root of these issues become clear. America does not have fathers. Mm, so true. An orphan nation with broken and dysfunctional families in search of identity. And so we need a clear path to healing and we need an answer to the problem of fatherlessness in our nation. And God wants to heal the wounded father uh, wound mm -hmm. in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And so I can just share, if you'd like, a little more of, of my testimony of healing. First of all, uh, when God heals our hearts, our minds, our emotions, <laughs> uh, even physical healing, there's different types of healing, of course. But if we want to talk about emotional healing, uh, it's a process. Mm -hmm. yes, so it the memory that I just shared with you of the childhood uh, that God wanted to bring healing. So we have painful memories from the past uh, that need to, to be healed. Mm -hmm. And that's called emotional healing. But I had another uh, major healing that took place actually not too long ago. At our church, we were doing uh, a class uh, called Making Peace with Your Past. Mm -hmm. And a very good curriculum. And so basically it was all about, you know, going back to your childhood, your relationship with your mother and your father, 
and you know healing that might need to take place so uh, so we were doing that at the church uh, meeting every week and you know in a group uh, going through this uh, process of of healing and so the the topic of my own father came up in, in this uh, course where I realized that I thought I had forgiven my father. I, I love my father. Mm -hmm. My father's still living. Um, and I didn't think I had any issues. <laughs> but um, the reality was that I was not close to, to my father. Mm -hmm. Didn't call very often. Mm -hmm. uh, d and he doesn't live that far away from me. But just was not close. And never really thought about it, though, you know. And then all of a sudden, one of my brothers one day said, oh, by the way, uh, you know, dad is getting treatment for the skin cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, was, I was upset. I said, why didn't anybody tell me he had cancer? Mm -hmm. And I guess people were like, well, why would you know you, you don't talk to dad? Mm -hmm. You really don't have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. And then it really hit me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, why would I not know that my own father has mm -hmm. a, a serious illness? And it, so it shocked me into reality. Yeah. It made me realize there must be a reason why I'm not close to my dad. Mm -hmm. So he had been diagnosed with cancer like a whole year before. Wow. wow. And I, it took a whole year for me to find out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I realized that, you know, I must need more healing uh, on this issue. So in this class that we were doing at the church, I dealt with it and was able to get more, uh, you know, f to do more forgiving. Mm -hmm. And I just remember at one of the sessions, you know, I'm the pastor, mm -hmm. okay, so mm -hmm. I'm leading the group. Mm -hmm. uh, but God <laughs> began, I got healing personally in, in the class where God just began to, to deal with me on, on the father issue. And I just mm -hmm. broke down crying and sobbing, mm -hmm. you know, wow. right in the middle of, of the, the, you know, the class. Mm -hmm. And uh, God just helped me to forgive Dad more for not being there mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as a child. And as I said, you can't get your childhood back. Yeah. Right. But so I, I forgave Dad more uh, for not being there for me when I was a child growing up. Mm -hmm. And it, it brought more healing, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> and praise God for that. And so I know that it made a difference because I radically began to change after mm -hmm. that, meaning that I immediately contacted my dad, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially yeah. because of the cancer issue, mm -hmm. uh, prayed for him for his healing. Uh, he did uh, overcome that skin cancer, praise oh, God. Yeah. And so it brought me a lot closer t to him and, and my stepmom. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so, yes, it really changed and brought me closer. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is just in recent years mm -hmm. to, to my father. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Praise God. Yeah. And what's even more awesome is, I think, as you're sharing that, mm -hmm. Pastor, um, as I sit here and think how much God loves us, you know, mm -hmm. and that he knows, you know, he knows, you know, that there may be another little issue, you know, or just yes. something that you haven't quite, mm -hmm. you know, gotten past. Right. And he knows the right time. He knows how to bring it when yes, you're ready, he he, when you're going to receive it, when you're yes. going to hear him. You know, like you said, you know, it was just like, wow, you know, like lightning struck, you know, <laughs> right. I, was like, well, I need to do something about this. And you were, you were able to say, say it and know that you were going to do it. You know, it wasn't like, yes. you know, you know. I'm not messing with him. You know, you were already to that point where you mm -hmm. knew you needed to move beyond where you were, and it was into another part of the healing. And that's that's just that's the love of the Father. Yeah, I mean, especially as we get older. Of course, we're yeah. all getting older, and <laughs> you know, we're just happy that our parents are still alive. That's right. Because many people's parents have, have passed away, mm -hmm. and many people I've talked to, and even in that class I referred to, one of the women attending said, you know. I had a bad relationship with my father, mm -hmm. was never close, and when he died, uh, either she didn't bother going to the funeral or it didn't phase her at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. when her own father died. Mm -hmm. That's sad. And I don't, 
you know, think that that's what God wants. God mm -hmm. wants us to be close to mm -hmm. our, our own family and to to have a good relationship. Right, right. And, and reconcile before people pass away. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. well, we are running close and, and our time is getting away from us already. Uh, would you stick around and do another program? Absolutely. We need to finish this. And, and if you're watching today, you need to come back next Tuesday and, and catch the program because we're going we're gonna to continue this. There's a lot here, and we know that God's up to something. And, and I know before we close out here, um, you had mentioned this before yes. uh, the program today about the love letter. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's so interesting because in my <laughs> healing process through my, with my own father, mm -hmm. and I know somebody... God allowed somebody to bring that across my path. So I want you to share that uh, with the audience today as we um, close out the program, as just as he was reading that to who's ever listening as a love letter to them. Those of you watching today, just allow this to minister to you. Allow God to heal your heart from hurts from your earthly father. And this is your heavenly father speaking to you right now. This is called the Father's Love Letter. Just relax and allow God to minister to you as I read. And it says, My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. For you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You are not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry. With them the complete expression of love and it is my desire to lavish my love on you simply because you are my child and i am your father i offer you more than your earthly father ever could for i am the perfect father every good gift that you receive comes from my hand for i am your provider and i meet all of your needs my plan for your future has always been filled with hope because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are as countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you. In Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He came, Jesus came to demonstrate that I am for you and not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. And nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I am your father. Will you be my child? Love your dad, almighty God. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're out of time. Come back and see us next Tuesday. We're going to finish this program out with Pastor Melinda. And we want to see you then. So if you have any emails you want to send us or minister to you, give us an email. We really care about you and we want to pray with you. We want to hear your story. We want to know where you're at in your walk and how this ministers to you. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.